All right, so our statement now is, suppose you send an incident wave of specified shape GI of Z minus V1 T down string number one. It gives rise to a reflected wave HR of Z plus V1 T and a transmitted wave G of T Z minus VT or V2 T by imposing the boundary conditions find HR and GT. Okay, this is setting you up for what's going to come in a lot of this chapter. And I guarantee you, you'll see this again dealing in quantum mechanics. Um, so what we know is we have to be continuous at the boundary. So uh, again, if we deal with the Neumann and Dirichlet boundary conditions, we need to be continuous at the boundary. And the normal derivatives have to be continuous. So you see that at if we set the boundary at, or the knot, whatever, at zero... So left of zero, we need to be equal to the right of zero, the function values. And the derivatives to the left and the derivatives immediately to the right need to be the same as well. All right, so with that, the situation at hand gives us, well, we have the incident wave traveling to the right and the reflected wave traveling to the left and the transmitted wave traveling to the right, okay? So if we impose the function be continuous at the boundary, or z equals zero, we see that we have gi of negative v1 t plus hr v1 t is equal to gt minus v2 t, okay? Thus, the derivatives at the boundary yield, and we need to evaluate the same thing at zero to the, from the left and zero from the right. Let's go ahead and take that. We see we get a factor of negative one over v1 and with the der time derivative plus one over V1 with the time derivative and equal to negative one over V2 with the time derivative of GT. Push that all through, no big deal, um, I don't believe. And keep pushing through. Oh, do do. Yeah, okay. So, um, with that being said, um, yeah, so with the time dependency there, that's the only thing that makes these things different. And we don't know what GI, HR, or GT is, but we know that they have some chain rule effect on it. So with that, what we have to do is factor the that part of the chain rule out, which is getting rid of that uh, partial over partial T for both of them. And then we see by integration, they cancel out. So again, no, really no big deal there. But what's fascinating to deal with is how that time derivative allows us that constant there and gives us a ratio of V1 and V2. Um, so now that we have two equations for these boundary conditions, let's algebraically manipulate these to solve them. Adding these together uh, will yield, uh, as you see, a cancellation of the HR terms. And go ahead and see what that solves to. So we get 2gi is equal to 1 over plus v1 v2 times gt plus that constant. So let's go ahead and solve it all through and separate this for g of t. And once we find a common denominator, multiply that over and we see that we get a new constant c prime. Now gi, gt, and hr are each functions of a single variable u. So in the first case, u equals z minus v1 t. In the second, u equals z minus v2 t. And in the third, u equals z plus v1 t. So if we want to solve this thing for gt using some dummy variable u, we now have that where we have 2 v2 over v1 plus v2 gi with the ratio v1 v2 u times c or plus c prime. Okay, kind of hand wavy, but that's most of physics in the early realm until we get in a more explicit work. Uh, similarly, we just have to multiply the first equation by V1 over V2 and subtract. Again, algebra is your friend here. You see the GT terms cancel and we can solve this thing for HR. Again, in terms of GI, I'll let you sit through the work there. And we see that HR of U is equal to V2 minus V1 divided by V1 plus V2 times G1 minus U plus C prime. Um, this is all messy, so let's have more of a concrete example to look at. 
if we have gi is equal to ai cosine k1z minus omega t then we have a1 cosine k1 factored out z minus v1t gt similarly and hr similarly with the respective plus or minus signs with their directions and we see that we can rewrite with dummy variable u's in there here we see that c1 is a uh, C1, or excuse me, C prime is zero, and the boundary conditions say that the ratio of AT over AI is equal to 2V2 over V1 plus V2, and AR over AI is equal to V2 minus V1 over their sum, with V1, uh, V2, K1 equal K2. Um, again, that the ratios that we see here are going to come into effect again and again and again. This one is a little messy example, but when we see how they work with the electric and magnetic fields, it'll all be more concrete then. But we're just getting you set up for the fact that in order to solve for the reflected and transmitted, we have to do it in terms of the incident wave and find our ratios. And uh, yeah, we'll see it again and again and again. No worries there.